Today's video is sponsored by WB Games. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is a new third-person action shooter featuring an original story set in the DC Universe five years after the events of Batman Arkham Knight. Play as Suicide Squad members Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, and King Shark as they take on an impossible mission to save Earth and kill the world's greatest DC superheroes, the Justice League. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is out now on PlayStation 5 and other platforms, and you can get the deluxe edition if you'd like to as it comes with Justice League-themed outfits for each squad member, three Black Mask themed notorious weapons and more now let's get into these easter eggs okay so you already know this is a rocksteady game this is set within the arkhamverse if you've played any of rocksteady's arkham games in the past you know they are chalk full of easter eggs lots of hidden details and lots of stuff to go out and find when you explore the worlds of these games and obviously here in metropolis it's no different every street alleyway corner crevice in this entire map is full of dc lore that you can go out and look for and i'm not saying i found every single easter egg i imagine there are still tons more that i'm missing here in this video but i did find a lot so we're gonna go over some easter eggs and things you might have missed in suicide squad kill the justice league and let's start off with an easy one the batman experience experience this is one of the earlier missions that you do in the game and as you go through this batman experience you can tell obviously you're reliving the events of the batman arkham games but just past the arkham knight you can jump on top of oracle's clock tower and while you're on top of it there's actually a hidden man bat jump scare easter egg of course a reference to batman arkham knight when he scared the crap out of us. And there's tons of graffiti that you're gonna find plastered on the walls of Metropolis as you explore this open world that reference other characters and other villains. And the first one is such an easy find. After you go to the North Refrigeration and you talk to Penguin for the first time in the game, if you turn right around on a garage door, boom, there's Black Manta in graffiti form. I really hope he shows up in this game. That would be awesome. Over in the Neo Tokyo section of the map, which is beautiful to explore, by the way, you can find several pieces of graffiti on the walls that reference the Ghost Dragons. This is a gang that comes from DC Comics. You can also find where you're going around the open world of Metropolis, there's plenty of graffiti plastered around the walls that say you should hit the like button on this video. Moving on, though, if you head to this specific location here in Baker Line, you're going to find that there is a really cool Easter egg to the one, the only, peacemaker this is another character that i think would be really awesome to show up in this game and i hope that one day we could see that become a reality make your way over to the wonderland district and then you'll find that there is a king's flush building then over in the alleyway just to the right of it you'll actually see that there is a reference to the royal flush gang and this is a big one head to this location right here in the wonderland district and if you head underneath the bridge and just over to the other end you're gonna see that there is an Easter egg of graffiti on the wall for Deathstroke. Now, this isn't the only location that you can find this graffiti. And to be honest, with a lot of the stuff that I'm showing you here for these specific Easter eggs, you'll find them in many different places around the open world. Nevertheless, though, really cool that there is a hint here for Deathstroke in this game. And again, like I've been saying with the graffiti we're finding here, that character would be really cool in this game. I also found that over here in Baker Line, if you walk down this specific alleyway, you'll be able to find that there are wanted posters for none other than James Gordon Jr. From the comic books, this is Jim Gordon's son, and, well, he's kind of a psychopath. And finally, for the things that you can find plastered on the walls of Metropolis, head to this location in the Racine. Walk down this alleyway over on the left, and then you might find what looks to be Polka Dot Man taking out one of Brainiac's men. Minions. There's a reference to Polka Dot Man very early in the game when you want to steal stuff in the Hall of Justice. He is one of the villains, apparently, that the Justice League has defeated before the events of this game take place. And hey, the architecture in Metropolis is so good to look at. This world is really well realized, and in my opinion, Rocksteady have given us a beautiful rendition of the world of tomorrow. And in this world of tomorrow, there are several buildings that you can find that reference other other characters from DC Comics and even other Justice League members. First off, right next to Lex's giant statue of himself, in fact, just next to LexCorp in general, you can find Queen Consolidated, obviously a reference to Oliver Queen, the Green Arrow. This building is also, in fact, a riddle, so yeah, there you go. That's an easy solve for you. If you head on just past Queen Consolidated, you're gonna 
end up finding none other than Booster Gold International, obviously a reference to the DC character of the same name. And just beyond Booster Gold International, you'll find probably the building that belongs to his best friend, Cord Industries, of course, a reference to Ted Cord, the original Blue Beetle. Bank a left past Cord Industries, and you'll find that there's another building you can solve a riddle for. This is the Department of Extra Normal Operations, a reference to an organization of the same name from the comic books. And in terms of what they do, I, I think it's pretty obvious. Over at this specific spot here in Baker Line, you can find that there is Sullivan Place, 1938 Sullivan Place to be specific. In the comic books, this is the exact location in which Clark Kent and Lois Lane live together. Really cool attention to detail here from Roxette. And again, it's another riddle that you can solve. So, you know, I'm helping you out here. And also, I mean, you can find throughout the entire open world of Metropolis, several references to a magic show that's being done by none other than DC Comics character Zatanna. But speaking of all this architecture and all these different buildings that reference characters throughout DC Comics, there are some buildings that you can actually enter as you play throughout Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And from here on out, I must warn you that we're starting to get into some spoiler territories for the game. So if you haven't played through all of it and you don't want to know some things that happen, this might be a time to click off. And in that case, again, thank you very much WB Games for sponsoring the video. But okay, just after one of your first encounters with the evil Flash, you're gonna end up being dropped off into the Daily Planet by Wonder Woman. And the Daily Planet is chock full of Easter eggs. Newspaper headlines about Lex Luthor running for president, the demon bat in Gotham. You'll see a desk for none other than Perry White, the editor in chief at the Daily Planet. There's even some what looks to be concept art of the Arkham game that are now used as paintings in Perry White's office. Lois Lane's desk also triggers some dialogue from whatever character you're playing as, so you can go through that with each and every character to see what they have to say about Lois. And there's also a desk for one Clark Kent who suspiciously looks exactly like that guy Superman. And yes, he's even got a Superman hat on his desk, and each character that you play as will also have a specific line of dialogue when you approach Clark Kent's desk as well. And you know, once you first walk out of that crate and you go into the Daily Planet, one of the first desks you can actually find is for Jimmy Olsen. Another building that you can enter in the game is the Wayne Bank, and it's really cool. There are tons of Easter eggs that you can find in here, one of which being the fact that some of the paintings you'll see on the walls are actually for developers of the game. But also, just as you enter the main vault, this would be when you're about to approach Wonder Woman, who's making that kryptonite shield. If you quickly look to the right, you'll see a painting of the Wayne family. And then just to the right of that, you'll actually see some postcards with a kiss on it, some XOXOs, and it's signed by an SK. That would belong to the one and only Selena Kyle Catwoman. And then a lot later on in the game, towards the moment when you're about to fight the demon bat, you actually enter a bat cave that's hidden in Metropolis. And first off, you find the bat wing, which dropped us off so many great things throughout the events of Batman Arkham Knight. But also, you'll find a platform that has an AR challenge that you can enable. I guess in-universe Batman was doing some of those combat challenge maps. And then just past that is a nice display case that features tons of easter eggs to other villains that batman has fought we got like a joker box a riddler trophy mr freeze's gun black masks mask the mad hatter's hat but over in the corner you'll actually see red hood's helmet and now because i am such a freaking nerd for these games that is not the same red hood helmet that you see him wear in batman arkham knight in fact that is the concept design for Red Hood that didn't make the final cut of Arkham Knight. Okay, and finally, after you defeat the Flash and you finish that boss battle, you're gonna get transported to Earth 2. From there, you find out that there's a scan of Lex Luthor, so you go out on the look for him. Now, just before you approach Earth 2's destroyed Hall of Justice, there's this little building here that has a banner on it of Justice League Day. You'll find these banners on our prime Earth as we play throughout the game. That's kind of what was happening before the events of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. There are posters of Superman, Green Lantern, The Flash, Batman, and Wonder Woman, but on Earth 2, they look a little different. Wonder Woman's wearing a silver and red suit instead of the gold and red that she rocks in the actual Prime Earth, or at least from what we see of Wonder Woman in the game. In this version of Earth 2, Green Lantern is not Jon Stewart, but is in fact seemingly Hal Jordan. And The Flash is not Barry Allen, but also seemingly Wally West. From as far as I can tell, I could only find this Justice League Day poster, specifically of the entire lineup of the Justice League, 
from this mission. And that wraps up a ton of Easter eggs and things that you might have missed roaming around the streets of Metropolis in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I know I didn't find every single one of them and that's where you come in. I would love for you to let me know in the comment section below if there were any that I missed and if you'd like to see a part two. Thank you again very much to WB Games for sponsoring this video. Once again, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is a third person action shooter. It features an original story in the DC universe five years after the events of Batman Arkham Knight. You can play as Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, or King Shark and take on the impossible mission to save the Earth and kill the world's greatest DC superheroes, the Justice League. And as I mentioned at the top of the video, the game is out right now. If you'd like to, you can still get that deluxe edition though to get your hands on the Justice League themed outfits for each squad member, three Black Mask themed notorious weapons, and more. I've been Caboose. I'll see you guys later.